Hey guys, we're going to finish up our discussion from last Thursday's quiz, which was over pages 224 through 248, the only part I haven't yet posted a video for. I apologize, the OGT schedule has made it difficult to record videos and to get them posted, but I'm back on track now. Um, and so this is right after Dick and Perry have been arrested. And I think the most troubling and difficult thing that happens here is that Dick pretty much immediately, once they're in custody and are being questioned, just blames Perry for everything, puts him right in the forefront of the investigation and leaves out really important details like, you know, at first Perry claims that Dick did some of the shooting and Dick just leaves that out altogether. Also leaves out the part about how he tried to or wanted to rape Nancy Clutter. And, you know, so his confession is not a full one. It's also very melodramatic. You know, there's this newspaper coverage that happens later where he's collapsed on the ground after his confession. And it's just, you know, I'm sorry. Like, I really don't see Dick as the kind of person who would be so upset or so overwhelmed that he would collapse. That's just not, you know, not something I really see in him, not something I really believe in him. And, you know, not only is this a betrayal of the plan that Dick and Perry had from the outset, which was to continue supporting each other, but it's also, it's, it's very weak. And I think it's very ironic in a certain way, because one of the reasons that you know, Perry was so attracted to Dick, and you can take that however you want to as friends or whatever, um, is because Dick was so manly and so masculine, and yet we see him to be the one that just instantly cracks right under the pressure of interrogation. Although, how much is it cracking when you're just saying, oh, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it was someone else? I'm not sure, you know. Um, and so we continue to find more details of the crime. We find out that when they broke into the Clutter's house, um, Perry was very fascinated by these binoculars in Mr. Clutter's office and that he stole those from Mr. Clutter. And then the events of that evening kind of unfold more than what we had seen before. So they break into the office. They search the office. They realize there's no safe. They go into Mr. Clutter's room. They ask him where the safe is. Clutter comes back to the office, shows them, hey, there's no safe. Um, in the meantime, in between the office and going to wake up Mr. Clutter, they cut the phone lines. And then they go upstairs and go into Mrs. Clutter's room and still don't find any money, still don't find anything. Um, and the, the evening kind of unfolds from there. We find out that for a while the family was locked in an upstairs bathroom together while Dick and Perry searched the house, and that eventually what they did was to separate them all again and put them in separate places to kill them. Um, at first, actually, Kenyon was being hung by his hands in the furnace room where Mr. Clutter ended up being killed, but they were afraid that they would work together to escape, so that's when Perry put Kenyon on the couch. Um, and so, you know, we find out that basically the order of how the killings happen is that first Mr. Clutter's throat is cut and then they shoot him, then they kill Kenyon, then they kill Nancy, and then they kill Mrs. Clutter. And, um, you know, we hear details like Nancy begged them not to. This is also where we get the revelation that um, Dick was going to rape Nancy and that Perry basically says, if you want to rape her, you're going to have to kill me because I'm not going to let you do that. And we've heard before about how, you know, Perry is very unaccepting of people who have these inappropriate desires, how he can't respect people who can't control themselves sexually. And so this is maybe, I don't know if we want to call it a heroic moment from Perry, but it's definitely a big moment from Perry where he stands up to Dick and says, you know, bottom line, this is not acceptable. This is not something that is going to happen. Um, and so really that is kind of the end of this part of the book. But at this point in the book, there's a huge discrepancy between the stories that have been told. At this point in the book, Dick says, I didn't kill anyone. I tried to stop Perry. I couldn't stop him. He went crazy. It was horrible. I want you guys to remember, though, that Dick was the person who put this whole entire plan into motion. Dick was the one who didn't want to leave any witnesses. Perry was the one who tried to find disguises so they could leave witnesses. And now Dick is claiming that he had nothing to do with the murders. It's very suspicious to me. The story that we have from Perry at this point, which later will change, is that Perry was the one who killed Mr. Clutter by slitting his throat and then shooting him, that he was the one who killed Kenyon. But at that point, he was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't kill anyone else tonight. I'm overwhelmed. That he actually left the house, and that's when Nancy and Mrs. Clutter were killed. So we have two very different versions of the story. And it's important here because, yes, Dick could be convicted of a crime for being there, for being a part of the robbery, for the tons of other things that he's done since, like passing bad checks and 
all those kinds of things. But in Dick's version of the story, he is not a murderer. Perry is the only murderer that was there at that crime scene. Uh, and Perry's version is different at this point, although later we will see him change it. Um, and I think it says a lot about the dynamic of their relationship that Dick is willing to let Perry take all the blame and willing to push off all that blame on Perry, uh, even though, again, I personally, as someone reading this book, really question who it is who actually committed the killings. <laughs>